Hello, this is Ava from Soul GPS. In today's video, I wanted to give you six tips on how to survive the quarantine. These are the tips that I use myself as I am now in my own two week quarantine as I have just moved countries. Um, but these are also tips to empower you so that you can find your peace and your center during this difficult time. And also, um, I wanted to get, make a video that is more individual to you as opposed to uh, to tell you how to deal with people who are abusive um, if you were if you happen to have to be locked in with them that is the topic of my previous video which you can check out um, but this one again is specifically for you so I'm gonna give you six tips tip number one is to accept what's going on it's basically about surrender it's about saving your energy, you know, not fighting with the current, not resisting the situation. It's something that was a struggle for me personally for about two weeks after the things started to close and the world went into a lockdown. I found myself being almost like in denial of it happening and, um, and I ended up wasting a lot of energy just sort of fighting with reality. And once I finally said, you know what, it is what it is, I have to now make decisions according to the situation as opposed to dwell in wishful thinking and think about what ifs and, um, and be upset at what's going on, I felt much better. Now that actually also relates to the fact that we are tired as a result of this inner a cognitive dissonance that has become our daily norm in a sense because this has made everything so much more difficult. This has put many people in situations where they don't know whether they're going to have a job after this is over when or where they're separated from, from their family members who may need their help and they're unable to, to do so. Some of us are locked in foreign countries and for months we may not be able to return to our families and so on and so forth. So there are just so many different circumstances here to think about that um, if we think about it all the time and fight with it and try to change it, it can make us feel exhausted. So my second tip for you, tip number two, uh, speaks to this and it's about slowing down allow yourself to rest and especially if you have been through abusive relationships in the past maybe you just left one maybe you were in the process of leaving maybe you have had a family history of abuse your nervous system is exhausted this also can relate to stress at work and now maybe you have a little bit more time for yourself Maybe you were able to work from home. So I would use this time. We don't know how long it's gonna last. It is gonna change. It is going to pass. Something new will come out of it, something different. But um, my approach is let's take advantage of the best that this time can offer, even though we can, of course, list countless things that are awful. But let's look at the bright side as much as we can. And I think the ability to rest a little bit more, hopefully, um, is one of them. Now, if you have to homeschool your children, or if maybe you have even bigger workload now that you're at home, maybe you're stuck with your abuser, it could be more difficult to rest. But in any way you can, if you can do that, do it. So that's my tip number two, which is to allow yourself to slow down. Now, this is a time also where you can hear a lot of uh, coaches, like high performance coaches, uh, tell you things like, well, there's never been a better time to start your own business or to read the 15 books that you've been, you know, piling on your end table or, you know, or something about learning a new language or training for your best body. I mean, the list goes on, right? And for some of us, it may be actually an optimal time to do exactly that. But for the rest of us, myself included, we may feel actually a bit demo demotivated and tired, frankly exhausted by the whole tragedy that's unfolding around the world. And I don't mean this lightly. Um, and so it can weigh us down. So it can be more difficult to, to do the work that you need to do. This is something also that I know uh, from my classmates. I am currently enrolled in the university 
uh, program and we're all talking online and sharing you know how we're coping with this time and we're all exhausted including our teachers <laughs> we're all exhausted even though our workload in some ways has diminished we have more time now to focus but it's tiring for some reason I don't know if it's that we are all connected in this sort of um, you know mentality of um, difficulty and tragedy and challenge and trying to process all of it, I think this may have something to do with it, is that we're we are still processing the changes and trying to figure out what all this means, what, um, where is it going, when is it going to end. So if you're naturally feeling more tired, then know that you're not the only one, you're not alone with that. We're all feeling pretty exhausted. My tip number three is to learn presence and practice mindfulness. This really is the best time for this, really is, because we don't know what's coming in the future and we can be racking our brains trying to figure this out. It is going to become apparent as the months, the weeks and the months unfold, but maybe for now we can learn to be more anchored in today and just think about what do I have to do today and get through the day and then the next day and then the next day and allow ourselves to just be here now. The mind then can be unburdened from all of these thoughts, these worrisome thoughts and concerns about what's going on and what does it mean and where is it going and you can take a deep breath and just anchor yourself here and now and be relieved from that and there's a, there's a beautiful book that I recently came across which talked about this idea that the mind, when it's free from painful thoughts and ideas, is going to naturally surface a mood of joy and happiness. It's a, a natural state. So it may be a good idea to just, to just be here and to not go too much into the past or too much into the future, but to just be more present. So that's something um, that I would recommend. Uh, my tip number four is to practice spontaneity. So this ties in with narcissistic abuse in the sense that if you've been with someone who is obsessed with controlling their environment, and that of course includes you, then you may have, you may have been forced to be very calculated in your behavior, in the way you walk, in the way you talk, in the way that you do the most random thing because you feel like you're under constant observation by this person. And that is, again, exhausting, right? And it robs you of your spontaneity, of just being you, being who you are. So if you happen to be isolated from that person, um, this, again, could be a good time to allow yourself to just do whatever it is you feel like doing. Let's say that this person was trying to force you to eat a specific diet that you naturally don't resonate with, but you wanted to please them, so you did that. So maybe this is a good time to ditch that. Maybe this is a good time to change the way you dress, to change the way you do your makeup, maybe not do makeup at all, maybe not wear high heels, maybe not try to look good and sexy all the time. Maybe it is a good time to watch movies and shows that interest you specifically and not follow you know, the suggestions of the abuser. So practice spontaneity and just allow yourself to be you. you know, clear your plate. Um, try to approach every day in a fresh way where you just have the ability to discover yourself and you. My fifth tip is be careful with hoovering because now is the time where these people are going to start coming out and you know uh, bombarding you with text messages, phone calls, emails. You know they will be uh, showing up on your social media. Narcissists don't really know how to deal with this time with being quiet and isolated and their own space. They need others so these the other people can reflect their greatness. You know, they have this insatiable need of uh, to to keep reconfirming their grandiosity. So they look for people um, to engage with. So you know, they can gather their narcissistic supply. So don't be surprised if you're going to hear from your ex. But also be careful not to um, swallow the bait because there is nothing worse, I guarantee you, there's nothing worse than being in isolation while you're also suffering because this person didn't reply to your text message or has been devaluing you now at a distance. Yes, that can happen. They can devalue you and discard you without even seeing you face to face. Or God forbid, you know, they will infect you. 
because those people we should expect anything right um, so so yes yeah, so be careful with that be careful with hoovering stay in your space allow this time to be your time and my final tip tip number six deals with the media and misinformation floating around the internet right now there's so much of it oh my goodness like every day you wake up to a new theory to you know a new version of reality so we got to be very careful about that because it's going to affect how you feel you know and if the information is laden with fear and um, you know and paranoia and things like that I mean you be the judge you going to follow whatever you feel is right for you but just be careful because again that can rob you of your peace can make you even more exhausted it can tax your nervous system so in some ways i think it may be better to just turn it off you know i try to be very careful about the amount of time i spend online because it can be so easy to get just sucked into this rabbit hole and i try to you know just look in the morning real quick five ten minutes max just look at what's going on because I'm curious, I want to know. And then I just close it down and I just try not to look at it. Instead, you know, I am uh, focused on my schoolwork and, and work, working with you and recording videos and doing things like that. So that keeps me certainly very busy. So find your own rhythms, discover yourself, practice being present, allow yourself to slow down. Don't feel bad if you need extra rest, if you need extra sleep. And, um, and just accept the situation because there it really isn't much we can do about it right now it is going to change we're all going to get through it but uh for now it is what it is so i'm sending you lots of love i hope you're doing well and i will see you next time take care bye bye